All right, we're live. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Led. Thanks for being here. It's so exciting to have you here on Wildcard Wednesday. We're starting off. Everybody, welcome. Uh, I can't see all the people yet, but they're going to come on in. We'll give them a minute. How are you today? I'm you really good? good. Yeah. Absolutely. You look good, man. You're in your studio, right? Yes, I'm in, in my home studio here. Um, had to uh, set something up for the quarantine, and it, it's very cozy here. <laughs> That's um, cool. It's in the guest house of my house, and then my daughter, of course, she's in the main house, and I get to pop in occasionally Aww. and see her and, and watch the new development. You're a new pop pop. That's, right. <laughs> That's so cool. Thank man, you. thanks for being here on Wildcard Wednesdays. Hey, everybody, I'm looking at your comments. Say hello. If you're there, we're here. We're going to talk to Jeff Gittleman. We call him Giddy. Jeff Giddy is in the house. He has worked with so many artists, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. But he's worked with her, Anderson Pack, Usher, Mac Miller. The uh, Usher track is so great that you recently did, but we'll oh, talk about so that. Much. But before we start, I want to let people come on in. We're going to be talking about the song called Same Love from the wild card that uh, Jeff and I uh, wrote. So here we go. It's called Same Love. It don't get no hotter than July. Ooh. Baby, I'm so happy I replied. So they... Right. Left our inhibitions at the door. We know exactly what we came here for We ain't really trying nothing new I don't really mind the deja vu History is better on repeat Makes me wanna take you back. We ain't trying to make this house a home. I gotta stop. I can stay in that song all day. <laughs> Jeff, gosh, come on, yeah. Jeff. Tell us some of the inspiration behind Same Love. Um, when you sent me this, it was in a higher key. People don't know that. And, uh, it was out of the blue, this random text <laughs> you sent, and I got this song, and I was blown away. I fell in love with it. So tell me tell me more about it. People love this song, by the way. This is a fan favorite. Like, it shot up Spotify like crazy. This is like a oh, huge song awesome. for the people. Yeah, I feel like I can't talk about the song until I, I, I go back a little bit, take a few steps back. You want me back. to play it longer? No, 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 I'm saying like kind of explain, explain like our creative history together. Yes, because, yes, yeah, let's talk about us. Yeah. Because when when we first when we first met, which was a few years ago, well, first I'm not even gonna say I saw you perform um, a long time ago in, in in New York City with Robert Glasper, um, at, oh, at, wow. somewhere in New York at, at a different different decade. Um, but <laughs> like, was, I remember thinking like, oh my God, this is these are some of the most some one of the most versatile vocalists I've ever heard in my life, and uh, all that to say, years later we were introduced by a mutual friend named uh, Jerry L. Johnson. Yeah, I think at first we hung out and we we just listened to music together. And I remember specifically, um, we have a lot of similar influences, but really, um, it, 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 oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, the uh, uh, Ron. Yeah, the guy the guy wrote all the Michael Jackson from Heat Wave. Oh my goodness. Oh yes, Rod Temperton. Rod Temperton. Rod Temperton. Temperton. We love Rod Lord Temperton. Temperton. I yes, mentioned yes. one of my favorite songwriters. And um we, we just we started talking about that. And I remember yeah. when we met, we kind of connected creatively. We 
um, exchange texts, and but yeah. we, didn't, we haven't we didn't work. And then we worked um, on a song for your previous album, which we wrote together in the same room. So it was I feel like throughout five years of knowing you and like collaborating with you that I felt confident enough to send you a song. You know I what I mean? About, I, I'm so sorry. I should have started there. But definitely when we when we met, we were at a, a Alice Smith concert. I know when we formally met, uh, Jerry L introduced me to you. And I thought, wow, this guy is cool, you know, and all the stuff we, I said, let's hang. We just exchanged numbers. We hung out and we just, like you said, we just listened to music and uh, had the same taste. And it was five years, really? Gittleman. I, I, well, yeah, like I said, we worked a little bit. We worked. We we did a song um, on the previous album. And we we did some writing sessions together. Yes, the song we did on the previous album, "Let Love Rule," was uh, this Anita Baker style song. Dang, what is the name of it? Oh my God! Listen. Oh my God! Look at us. We just both went home. Huh? Um, oh, it's such a great tune. I can't remember it, but forgive me, Jeff. I didn't even prepare oh, for that. Listen, look, listen, look it up really listen, quick. Uh, I am. Let I Love am. Rule. It's the it's yeah, the Anita yeah. Baker like feel of it. Um, here. Yes. Yep. Here. Here. If you're gonna, if you're gonna stay, I need you to be here. That's right. Yep. To yep. love me, to show me that you care. Let me know you're here. Here. Uh, All those crazy. In you always have like these intricate. Um, uh, chord progressions and changes in your song, like like Rod Temperton, where the voice gets to bend and do all these wonderful things. What, Thank what you. are some what? some of your influences um, as well? But we yeah. can talk about the song. But I want to know more well, about yeah. your influences mainly. Yeah, well, I grew up. Um, I grew up li really listening to jazz. My dad turned me on to jazz when when I was a kid. Um, I when I was really young i really fell in love with the beatles that was uh some of my first some of the first music that i really um it resonated with me on a deeper level and then when i when i got into playing guitar and music um after the beatles my dad really turned me on to jazz so um i really liked uh, uh george benson west montgomery um countless others grant green um and then you know stevie wonder was it was a big influence these are just things that I, I i picked up at home you know stevie wonder I was a big then i really got into donny hathaway and, and marvin gay and al green and so it's always been um it, it's always been a a, a, a jazz it's i've always been uh raised on jazz but but yeah. but, but like r b and soul music is really where I, I i gravitate to on my own so um i feel like a lot of my music ha have both of those and and just like you just like you you know yeah. Um, I, I've heard you channel everything from Shaka to Sarah Vaughn and everything in between, right? So um, I, I feel like that's where we, we, uh, yeah, we connect. But do, do you do you think that some of your producing and songwriting, because you're a musician as well, that you play you played out with other artists as well as being your own artist, that that's helped you be uh, right, be able to create this material, this vast uh, catalog you have. No, thank you. Yeah, I, I, when I just growing up in New Haven, Connecticut, um, you know, I was like a sponge. I really try to just gravitate towards um, just anybody that I, I found I could learn from, you know, and, and just often I find it, it you, you circumstance kind of dictates your your career, right, and a certain yeah. uh, uh, professional opportunity. So just it just so happened that after college, the very first thing I got was to a call to audition for Lauren Hill, which I ended up getting the job. So that, you know, she was already a big influence, but it, it led me down a path that after that I, I was working with Alicia Keys and it led me down that path. And um, those two are, are huge. I will learn so much working with them. And um, again, you know, if it was a different circumstance, I would have learned uh, from a different school, but that yeah. was where my, that was where my life led me. And, um, and I tried to soak up a lot of that, you know, um, and, and it, it still comes out in what I'm, what I'm doing, you know? So what, what, um, led, and we'll talk about the song y'all come yeah, back yeah, to yeah, that. Sorry. What led, what <laughs> led to the, uh, producing and, you know, yeah. LA and all that. Right. Know? Right. Well, I, um, I was always really passionate about songwriting. Um, I mean, look, I, I have to talk about the business side of it. I, I was always, I was always attracted to and wanted to educate myself about the deeper uh, business side of music. And one of it was uh, making 
uh, copyrights, essentially writing songs, which is really intellectual property. So being a guitar player, um, just naturally you're a work for hire. And I always, uh, for my OGs and my mentors, I always heard that you have to develop a catalog, you know, because so that's a different side of it. So so having a stake in intellectual property is something that I've really kind of chased. And it took me about 10 years. It took me about a decade of, of, of working trying to become a producer mm. producing in my own time writing in my own time making beats in my own time sending people things to some random email that nobody's ever going to check it, doing all that for 10 years and seeing right. some of my friends actually get ahead of me um and when i saw one of my friends get ahead of me i started asking questions well how come he's becoming successful and i'm not and i had to really look into what i was doing um in my my lifestyle and my career and so then um i became an artist I, I made an album with some friends i formed a, a band um called the step kids and uh uh we signed yeah. stones throw and we made an album and that's really when i felt that i reached a certain level of production that with my friends we able to create a sound that i didn't hear i have not heard anybody do um that distinctly so that that's what gave me the confidence to know that okay um when, when people like let us see uh let us see. Sorry, I'm looking over here. People like, okay. Radiohead, people like Radiohead and, and, and Snoop Dogg um, posted in blogs that they, they were a fan of some of the work that we've done. Um, I, I really realized if those are my heroes and they look up to the sound that we've created that I, you know, it gave me the confidence to understand that I could pursue it on a bigger level. And then ultimately I moved to Los Angeles and did pursue it. And listen, a lot of it is you, you try things and sometimes, you know, the universe just doesn't agree with it. But other times you try things and the universe does agree with it. Not to say that anything is overnight. It just it means that sometimes you you have this push wind from from God or whatever it is. And, and when I moved to L.A., it it it's been hard work, but it did. It was a lot easier than um, than the previous years for me to make a career out of production. But in the last, I'll say, four or five years. Mm hmm your work just has taken off. Like you've worked with a, sl a consistent <laughs> amount of people back to back and you were able to do your own record, mm -hmm. um, your own project. I mean, how does, how are it's you feeling? A it's a lifestyle, you know, it's a lifestyle that I just work and I don't lift my head up, you know? And, and it's crazy because as you know, Led, songs come out years after they're written, after they're recorded. Yeah, so yeah. I had, you know, in the last few months, I've had, let's say 16 major label releases come out, but we all know that some of them were made years ago. And you know what I mean? So yeah. Um, that, yeah, I just been, I've had a lifestyle of, of work and commitment to this because I love it because we love it. Yeah. You know, I don't see it as a job. I see it as something that I love and I need to do. So sometimes I'll, I'll do two, three, four songs two three sessions a day you know not because i feel like i have to it's because this is really what i'm here on earth to do is make the music that i you love can and feel it you can feel it in all the work you've done and you know Thanks. i always like did jeff do this because because it has an organ it always has an organic sound it it's musician it has that musician energy but it also is fresh and modern like it's like you're looking for this n new version of what we of nostalgia that we love, you know what I mean? That's why same love, I think, screams no, so much to other people. It's like, or or the songs you've done, you could just feel them. Is that pur purposeful? No, you thank you. I, and, and, I, and I think you said something very important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think what, what, what I wanted to address is something that you said, which to me is very, very important, which is um, making it feel new. You know, because yeah. because I, I'm in an interesting time in my mid thirties that um, you know, I'm I'm working with some nineteen year olds in the business, you know, and and they're coming with a whole different swag, with a whole different approach, right? Because they're from a different era. I'm from the era with no computers that we just played instruments, we memorized an entire song, and then you, you recorded, you had to play the whole thing, yeah, consistently. You know what I mean? So yeah. now I don't, I, I never. What one of my mentors told me that I never never talk down on the young generation no matter what it is what, no matter yeah. how whatever you think their music is compared to what you know it's every generation and as soon as you start hating on it is when you start actually being out of touch you know so that's something i took heart and um I, I try to surround myself with with younger producers younger younger artists and just always be learning from them because i do think it's important to 
I'm at an interesting point where I'm in between generations. And if I could connect these two together, yeah. which yeah. I think we did successfully, you know, yeah. here we, we took an old sound and um, with Sir's approach, we were able to tap into some some different kind of cadences, which, by the way, you sound amazing on the song. And I will say I will quote Sir because because Sir did call me. Uh, when he heard your version, and I didn't send it to him until I knew we were we were ready. And right. when I finally sent it to him, he called me right away, and I was like, "Oh, what's this?" And he said how much he how much he loved it, and basically oh. saying that like, "Wow, what I did was cool, but she really took it to another level," you know, with with your interpretation of the song and. Um, yeah, I yeah. Think his his, his version, version is though. just as dope to me because. And it's in um, the male key, of course. So I had to find my key. But what he did is so dope. Like he bridged a gap, a, two worlds together, like we all do. Yeah. He, he bridged these these this combination. Is just oh, I love his voice. Is amazing. No, but great. that when I heard it, I just loved the way it made me feel. And I sat on it for a while, maybe a year. Same love. And you sent it, and I just was blown away just blown away and of course the songwriting i loved it and i didn't pay attention to the lyrics that much because i just loved the way it felt it felt like you lit a you lit a, a cigarette or whatever you smoke <laughs> and it and you know how the oh, smoke have, you know yeah. how the smoke moves like this i do i i do not that's know. how that record feels like it's just floating above you and around you and it gives you that that fuzzy feeling that I love about same love um i uh, wish he was yeah, here to talk yeah. more about about the song the inspiration uh behind it but the lyrics i was telling someone it's so sensual it's so sensual um what are when you what was what were going to ask you about your approach on the song uh, yeah. Can you give us more about the, you know, how you, yeah. what did you guys so, start with? And so, so first, let me just say, because I wasn't there when you created it. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let, I let came just, later. Right. And, and and first, let me just say that I think it's so important to just genuinely be friends and and like the people you work with and yeah. just how. And I, I wanted to say the story about us meeting years because I just want people to know that um, uh, these relationships and, and uh artistic connections they last a lifetime yes and sometimes they, they take a little bit of time to develop you know and um sir i've known him for a very long time before when i first wanted to make a transition i was at a really low point in my life in my career that things weren't working out i started i took my first trip to la to kind of test the waters it was 2013 and i met sir at that time who was also in a similar position he was an engineer actually people don't know and, oh, wow. and he had a passion of that writing song and, and he he was you know he and he had a passion of writing songs and i just always above all it stuck out his passion stuck out to me so um so i've known him for a while and we we wrote songs 2013 and then i seen him occasionally come by anderson pack's studio when me and anderson uh, shared a studio um and i seen him throughout the years but we never um really connected uh like as closely as we did before and yeah. then um i have we have a mutual friend cal banks who's a co-producer on the song and then we, the three of us um circumstantially just got together one day and um we did a song on search project called john redcorn which is actually also um, wow. a fan favorite of people's and yeah. uh, and the thing is it just was so natural because i i already have such a deep friendship with cal and and a, a history a creative history with sir that that was the first time the three of us worked together but it was like as if it was so natural and um as if we worked together for years so we did that song and because that song came out so good um we set up another session and same love was when we did was when we, that's when we did it. it was the second song we did together uh -huh. um and we started with just guitar and um we wrote it with just to just an acoustic guitar and then um we kind of did it the opposite once you write a song you kind of start then you put the drums and bass we kind of did the opposite we did guitar bass keys and then drums last wow I don't know. that's crazy yeah. yeah and um but again you know 
I think, I, th I think the songs, they are like people. There, there's no two that are the same. And I think our, it's our creative relationships that are really the interesting, deeper part of what we do creatively. So what made you say, I want to send this one to Led? Um, because I love the song so much and it, it was. Because he could have easily recorded that and put that you know, out. You know, you know, <laughs> and, and I initially, you know, I initially thought that that was that's what was going to happen, you know. But right. when I, I remember specifically speaking to him and running into him um, at another session and saying, hey, what I, I heard, uh, you know, I heard the album is being announced like what's on it and he said that mm -hmm. john redcorn is going to be on it and then i immediately said well what about same love he said yeah no it just it didn't fit the format i forgot what he said and i immediately said hey <laughs> i have somebody i would like to send it to right there in that conversation and i said your name and i said would you be open to that and he said are you kidding me i would love that i said well then i send it to you right there and um uh, yeah, and then we we all connected, and you yeah. and Sark talked, and that was awesome to see you guys connect. Yeah, um, so I I knew his family before I met him. That's crazy, Tiffany Couche. Exactly. And I knew about D Smoke, but I didn't know him yet. So mm -hmm. that's crazy. I met everybody, and then met him last. <laughs> yeah, and and I don't know. I I just I I feel like, yeah, because there's there's very few people that could sing a melody like that and, and and not just just sing it but really emotionally interpret it and do it justice so you know well, i still don't know who else <laughs> besides listen, that i could have possibly send that song to so i'm not bragging but i knew i was gonna sing the <laughs> mess out of that song come on, here come on. it was so you, good it's that. such a good feel good people needed it and i needed it i needed it to just show that i love the, all of this, this fresh energy, this new sound, but it still feels like the old, the, the bridging together. And like, like I just you, love it. And let me ask you, I mean, the song is, is edgy. There's edge to it. And I'm yes. not, I'm not going to tell what it, the lyrics mean to me because I don't, I think the fans should interpret it how they want to. Way. I yeah. want to ruin it for them. But I know what it means for me lyrically and even sonically um there is edge to it it's 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 jazzy it has a little weirdness to it you know what i mean so so I, that's just something i'm curious with like is that would you have done a song like that um a few years ago when you were dealing with it with it, like maybe a, yeah definitely got definitely. you without a doubt hands right. down i'm a little rebel i don't like boxes that's why i named the album the wild card I don't wow. like boxes. I don't like being placed in a certain box, but it's just part of being an artist. Mm -hmm. People love you where they meet you. They love you where they have a memory attached to a particular sound of you or a song. And so mm -hmm. that's just part of, you know, that's just part of how it is. And, but I keep breaking out the boxes <laughs> and scaring yeah. some people, but also uh challenging our music move pushing it forward and going to a different audience to show them hey here here's another sound for you that you may not like or, or may not have whatever buy and then you fall in love with it you Absolutely. know and yeah. then you want to know what my influences are and that takes you down another wormhole exactly. <laughs> that goes on and on and on and on so that's why i love doing wild card wednesdays because it tells people more about who I am. I remember someone saying uh, to me, people don't know you. And I said, wow, really? After all these years, people don't know who I am and who I'm... I said, okay, I'll show them who I am. And I also tell them who I'm around so they can know that everyone else around me has that same energy of just creating and painting mm -hmm. sonically. Mm -hmm. We're artists. It's not a, we, sometimes we use acrylic exactly <laughs> sometimes we don't you yeah. know hey you guys if you have any questions for uh jeff or myself that are directly <laughs> towards music uh please we're watching your comments you can go ahead and leave them in there uh hey jonathan aj lewis i see you want to shout out i just shout you out i see nola's in the in the building how y'all doing 
a lot of people love. Oh, there we go. Hey, it, everyone. I'm telling you to check out um, Big Old GK Fresh on YouTube. He's amazing, writes and produces. This is the okay. time. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. This is the time. But if you have any questions, y'all, please, uh, we can see them and go, go, go for it. I wanted to, um, you and I do a lot of uh, advocacy work. That means we go out and do um, work. We build communities and build other artists and make sure artists have rights and lobby for things. We're very active music in the schools and things like that. Um, you started your own school in New Haven, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called Duality School of Music. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us more about that, the, why you needed to do that. What yeah. The, the, the passion behind it. Yeah, I just found, I found, thank you for, for yeah, for mentioning that because um, it, it is important. I do remember early on, that was one of the things that we really uh, connected, you know, uh, on. I, I just found that um, basically it, it came from, it came from, it came from a place to really kind of help people to not go through what I went through. And at the mm -hmm. same time, certain parts that I was very fortunate to avoid, I want to um, kind of pay forward just how people have for me. You know, uh, one of the biggest challenges I found is that I found growing up in New Haven, Connecticut, there's so much talent. And, um, you know, some, some of the greatest talent in music I've ever seen, I, I've seen right there in my own hometown, but there's no industry and there's no... Um, there's no money to be made. There's no business. And so therefore, um, the art doesn't reach a certain um, level that I think it can, you know. So it took me years. It took me a decade of, of making mistakes and, and and failing, essentially, to understand what it's like. So I, I when I started getting traction, I realized that, wow, wouldn't it be great if I learned this, these things 10, 20 years ago? So I said, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to do that. I'd love to be able to give back because I know that there's somebody like me who has the talent, yeah. has the dedication, and maybe, maybe I could, maybe together, if 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 I start nurturing and mentoring them early on, maybe together we could do something great years down the road. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe so. And and it's actually amazing because it's happening because um one one of my students. Uh, ben Soberman, he um, and it's funny because yeah. when I first started the, the the program, I really just only envisioned uh, kids who, with a musical talent. Um, this particular young man who was a junior at the time, he wasn't so much a, a producer um, or or a writer or a musician. He really just was very fascinated by music and by the business and knew the market very well. He knew every single artist, whether it be indie or major label, and um, he he. Yeah, he was very well educated. At 17 years old, I noticed that he has a passion for the business and for artistry and discovering undiscovered artists. So, um, you know, I I, he, I picked him for to be a student. Then uh, I offered him an internship in Los Angeles, which he then took me up on. He came to Los mm -hmm. Angeles twice or maybe even three times every, you know, he, he got it, figured out a way to graduate high school two months early. And while all the kids were partying and, and going to the prom, he came to LA to intern with me and Omaski. Wow. So, so anyway, so, you know, a few years later, as he kept interning, I, 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 I recommended him for an uh, internship position at Atlantic, a, a company called APG run by Mike mm -hmm. Heron. And he did so well there that I'm just very happy to announce that he just, um, got a position as a and r consultant uh, at, at, at Warner at Atlantic Records, and I'm I think he's like 19 now, and I'm just so proud of him. That as, is as so big cool. So if we're patient, we could actually see these these results, and he's still just getting started. But that's a young man that again, um, I'm a lifer in this. You're a lifer, you know. I see us certain relationships. I see I see us having for free forever and and he's one of those you know I, he's going to have a bright career and i and i hope to do some some big and that that it's all worth it because it's not yeah. easy let me just say that it was not easy I was I'm, gonna I'm, say. I'm, I'm a musician i'm an artist <laughs> i need to lock myself in a room and i create music um raising money doing emails and logistics all that that's not my thing so it it, it was not easy running the the music program but um but it, it's all worth it to, to see these results you know
I love it. I love this is so yeah. great. Oh, so I'm you, proud. You're, I mean, you're really putting in the work for the I community. See somebody from, I saw there's somebody from New Haven here. Oh, Chief yeah. Blair. Yeah. Was there any questions, Ron? Oh, there, look, T. Blair. She's from New Haven. All right. What's your favorite song on your new project? Mine is, uh, I'm gonna say Same Love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna say Same Love. I, I'm gonna say that it's it's one of my favorites. I love, I love the whole body of work. It's just hard to pick one, but if I would say singing wise, same love. I loved singing that song. It was. It just felt really good, and you can hear it when you listen to the song. I'm really giving my all on it, just like all the rest of the songs. But there, it's a little different. It's sensual, and I've never gotten an opportunity to be that way, like that on that song. So yeah, I love mm -hmm. where I am. What is your motivation for the song? Where I am is about not chasing other people or chasing anything. Let it all come to me, come where I am. Um, I remember in, earlier in my career, I would dim my light to fit in so everybody's comfortable or I would um, just be quiet even though I wanna be loud, <laughs> you know what I mean? To make everyone else comfortable. Now I just be myself and just not, um, quiet myself, just be whatever it, I'm feeling in the moment and go for it. And people can catch up to where I am. Meaning I love getting older and enjoying being grown and not caring what other people think about me. I can't please everybody. So where I am is meet me where I am. They can't be where I am. So catch me if you can, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's just kind of boasting about being comfortable in my lane. That's pretty much what it is. Giddy, you are younger than me, but you are so wise and dope. Your energy is lay layer back. Thank you. I like that. Layer hey guys, back. Can, we just all, can we all just acknowledge that speaking of singers that um, we had Miss Patty LaBelle and Miss Gladys <laughs> gave give a shout out to our very own Lettucey as, as, in, as in the conversation of some of the great young singers oh. who are carrying the torch. I mean, it, listen, it, <laughs> it, it, it out, Jeff. Man, come on. I, I was watching that at home. I was like, wasn't me, that cool? Oh, you no, know, I mean, listen, they're both incredible. Like to see them be just Queens sitting there at 70 something years old, still singing in original key, sitting down, it was crazy. I just enjoyed it. I love them. And I love Miss Patty. She I talked to her after that just to check check on her, see how she felt about it all. She loved it. She said it was beautiful. It's hard to get artists together. So when we all come together, yeah. any moment, it's just beautiful on the phone or just in person. So she had a blast. I'm happy for her. It was great. And I can't believe she mentioned my name. I was like, because my Twitter went whoosh, right. Ah! Please, Jeff, do you think that music can build or cure people who listen? Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 um, I, I honestly, I don't even know the, 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 the outlet I have in music. It really is so therapeutic for me. And uh, even before I was a musician, because now a lot of it is about work for me. And I'm, you know, I think of it as a certain, on a certain productivity level, but outside of it um listening to it for therapeutic purposes I, if i didn't have that outlet as a child um i don't know where i would be yeah. uh, you know and and i i grew up on love songs you know and i don't know i i can't help but to think that what i the lyrics that i took in and ingested as, as a child with these love songs shaped the kind of person that i am you know and um i mean of course you know i i, I grew up in the 90s loving hip-hop and of course you know i i, I would e indulge in music that wasn't necessarily all love songs either but i i do you know i do want to encourage the young generation too that it's it's okay to write about love and that um what we're saying does matter and um the narrative does affect um our culture and our society and that we should be wise in how we use that power 
that we have. It was beautiful. Jeff, I had a question. <laughs> yeah. When you recorded your uh, solo uh, music, mm -hmm. was that any different from writing for um, another artist? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I think um, balance is important for a creative. And um, if you're in a place, if you if you, if you're an artist and, and lit, I, we haven't even spoken about this, but I already know that I already know that you could probably share some stories that when you're a leader and you're a boss and you're you're always in, 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 um, in a position of power and you have to delegate things to people. Sometimes it's nice to be around another leader. And to take a back seat and just to learn and just to say, you know what, just 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 tell me what to do. Just to, you take the wheel. Yeah. And sometimes it's the opposite. If you if you are in a, a, a position where you have to serve, you know, um, it's a service. Production is a service industry because it's all about the artist. Whether I'm composing for a film or for an artist, it's it's about serving the bigger uh, the, the the artist or the or the the bigger piece of art. And when you're doing and when you're doing that a lot, sometimes I feel like you need an outlet yourself to where where it's just you and you could take the wheel. So that working on it on, on my solo stuff has been a great outlet for me to take the wheel, you know, because it it then it allows me to come back to my um, collaborate collaborators and not impose any personal agenda. Personal because we have so you know if you don't get that out of you, yeah, you have all this built up personal artistic agenda that you want to do and it might not necessarily be fitting for what you're working on at the moment well i love i love your solo stuff too it's such a vibe she meant laid back not layered back no of course, of course. <laughs> any other questions did we have one ron the younger Before... generation there's one right here i'm reading oh um, go ahead say it. I say what that is. In a rut creatively um and what's going what's going on, uh, Jonathan? Good to see you, man. It's been it's been years since since uh, Berkeley. Yeah, I've known this young man. <laughs> oh um, wow, for a really long time. And um, you just you gotta you gotta you gotta live. I just see it as ingestion and and digestion. You know, um, if you're if you're spitting out a lot, you're not intaking enough. You know, and if you're intaking enough and not releasing it, then it's built up. So it's got to be a balance of 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 taking in at the inspiration so that you could have something to say mm. you know and the times that i don't have anything to say i, I realize is that i haven't um ingested anything that i that's worth being created i didn't even think about that oh there's a, there's the question the younger generation do not know how to write love songs and you don't see choruses vamps bridges modulation etc I interviewed Jeffrey Osborne. He agreed. Why is this, Jeff? <laughs> uh -oh. Listen, I, 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 I'm trying uh -oh. to, I'm trying to be diplomatic here and see both sides. Although there is a lot to that I could agree about um, in your statement. You know, it's just, it's just a different medium. Even though it's the same medium, it's a different, it's a different thing. I remember my dad loving Stevie Wonder, but not being able to appreciate James Brown. Because he's like, look at Stevie. He's got all these chords and all these uh, changes and all these things. And James Brown is just one four-bar loop vamping for 20 minutes. How, how could you, you know? And I try to explain to him, it's just, it's a different thing, you know. And um, I, I try to see it that way. I try, I try to see it that way that it, it's just a different form of expression. Because you know what? Um, because the, you can't sleep on the young generation. They're actually, I know it's hard to see, but they actually are doing things that the other generation didn't do. What yeah. they are doing with, with lyrics and, and how how they're um, televised and, 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 and the Instagram life, how it blends in together with their overall artistry is a really unique time right now. Yeah. And, and I feel like they are doing different things with their storytelling than um, previous artists have been able to do. But, you know, I... I I think it's up to us. I think it's up to people like us to actually make the difference. And that's why I do collaborate with a lot of the young artists is so that I could make a difference and I could offer them something that they maybe haven't thought of, you know, instead of just sitting and complaining about them and saying, you know what, what I'm going to go, let me go take this session and work with them and, and suggest something that they haven't done before. And I'll be honest with you, nine out of 10 times, they're so open to it. And they they just can't even believe that there's somebody in the room that could elevate them and give them wisdom you know and so um i love yeah. that thanks for saying that jeff because i it's like 
like you said, instead of bashing, figure out a way to inc give give more information, more knowledge. We had we had things we had so much accessible to us. Like even for you in your era, my era, there's we had a lot more information. I think that's just my opinion. A lot more elders and a lot more um, just a lot more around us to gravitate towards. Yeah. And people people to talk to. I mean like people like that you can go to and get information. Absolutely. And, I mean that's just my opinion. And the music was everywhere in my household. We had it everywhere. You couldn't escape it. So and being from New Orleans, then going to Oakland, I mean you're you're in it, you know. Right, right. Any more questions? Oh, how has music technology increased creative output? Has it hindered it in any way? Yeah, it's hmm, both. That's a good question. I think it's both. You know, I think I think it's amazing that somebody who doesn't even who's not a musician could sit down and technologically figure out how to how to put together a song or, or a beat. Mm. I think that is amazing. I think it's given us all the same tools. You don't need to. I think the beautiful thing about it, um, whether it's an artist like Billie Eilish or somebody that that you don't need a million dollar studio to, to make magic and to make the album of the year you know you could do it in your bedroom we all have the same tools so in a lot of ways it, 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 it leveled out the playing field but you know where do i where where i would like to see the the, the younger generation maybe evolve in is that exactly what led was just saying it's it's such a communal thing and it's the relationships and um i you know, the younger generation that I don't see prospering are the ones that are great and sitting in their bedroom, but do not know how to extend that into building a network, you know, um, and, and and collaborating uh, with each other. So, you know, like we would go to jam sessions and, and, and like just play and jam and yeah. just really hang, exchange ideas um, that, you know, when you're when you're so focused on doing it because you are able to do it yourself, you know, you just need to balance yourself out with, with, with collaborators that you could actually get the most important part of music, which is the human element. I believe, you know what I mean? It's the human element. Like, okay, yeah, you could have, a, you could have a machine make the same sound as, 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 as somebody else, but what's gonna, what's gonna make us stand out. It's our personality. It's, it's our experiences. It's our circumstances. It's, it's the human element that no two human beings are the same. So, you know, I think embracing those differences and in individualities. That is why I loved having musicians on my, on the wild card. It made it so special. It reminded me of the old, old way, but it was still new at the same time. Yes. Yes. And yes. Jeff, tell it, Jeff, tell it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, y'all. I'm getting excited. <laughs> it's no, so it's good. Awesome. Kitty. Oh, we had Nigeria. Wow. Anyone else? Any more questions before we go? This is the time. Jeff, I so appreciate you doing this. I know you're busy. You're in a session um, and you still had time to come here today. That means the world to me. Oh, um, there's another question. Dang. Okay. Which relationships were pivotal in becoming the artist that you are today? That's for you, Led. Oh, you're an artist too? Man, I think for me, um, relationships. My personal, my mother is a huge influence on me. Uh, what she listened to, I listened to. Uh, you know, how to stand like a queen and be the queen that I am. I learned from her and watching her and all the people she loved. Um, that helped influenced me big time. Her business sense helped. And uh, another relationship is my relationship with my family and my deep relationships with people I create with. Like I'm very loyal. Once I love on you and we have a connection, we gonna just argue and be together forever. I'll be hanging on your foot like Jeff. Where he goes, I'll be like, I'm on the next album, Jeff. <laughs> like I'm, once I have my people, I just stick to them like crazy and I'll bug them forever until I, till they come back around. You know, I don't care how big of a star they become. I'm like, hello, I'm still here, I need help. You know, and I'm, the relationships that allow me to be 
myself are the ones I value the most, where I don't have to be perfect all the time. I can sing off key or I, I can have a bad day and just be let us see the, the daughter and the friend. Those are the relationships I cherish the most because um, they help me become a better singer and a better uh, artist and a better human. That's the most important part. And the one, the I've had some great relationships by giving back to other people, by being of service. Those are the ones that help me be a better artist and a better songwriter. Oh, you get more out of that. Yeah. Is it ever too late to start a music career? I think Wes Montgomery, the greatest jazz guitar player that ever lived, I think he might have been 40 years old. Mm -hmm. He really started breaking through professionally. Now, wow. he, but he was, he was one bad man before that. Don't get me wrong. He didn't start from nothing at 40. He just, that's when he started actually focusing on the, on the professional that's side. That's when y'all caught up to where he was. Ah, uh, meet exactly. me where I am. <laughs> exactly. Hilarious. There you go, Jeff. Go ahead. What's that? What was the music that helped out for you? Um, uh, oh my goodness. So many, um, musical director Henri Gill, who was Alicia Keys musical director, he he really he took a chance on me and he, you know, I would I'd be making mistakes and doing the, the wrong things and he was very patient with me. Um Omas Keith. Uh, yeah, producer. Omas. Yeah, producer. He really listen, let me tell you something, man. <laughs> when I first came out to LA and tried to and started doing the production thing, I would do the worst ish. <laughs> I would I, I would just talk too much. I would say the wrong stuff. I would I wouldn't know the protocols of collab creative collaborating. I'd be like, no, 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 that's wrong. I'd say the, those things that you were never supposed to say to creative people. I would do, and there's many times that he took me to the side, and you know, I was coming from an artist background, so he said, I never forget this. He said to me, he said, listen, man, I'm not telling you what you would you what what you have to be because if you if you're like Prince. Prince doesn't give up about nothing. Right. <laughs> so he'll tell you if you tell him you can't, you can't, he can't say that. He'll tell you to go, you know. <laughs> but if you want to be a good collaborator <laughs> and you want to take that road, well, then you can't do what you just did in there, you know. So he gave me a choice: like you could just leave here and be a prince, and I respect you and I love you, or if you want to be a team player. And I remember making that decision that day: like <laughs> I'm gonna stay and. I'm gonna put my ego down, and um, yeah, there's been people that have been they've been patient with it, and, and, and also you know, listen, like on the business side too. Um, James Cheney was a publisher. I mean, I met this guy when I was in my early 20s. I, he took a meeting with me, a random 22 year old that every other meeting got canceled that week in LA, and he's the only one that didn't cancel the meeting. And I met with him that day, and then fast forward 10, 12 years later. When I'm back in LA and we meet back up and now I have a big song and he wants to sign me, I said, you know what, I'm gonna sign with this guy because he took a chance on me 12 years ago. And then he took a meeting with me and he's still, he's been keeping in touch with me for 12 years, sending me random texts, you know. Wow, uh, that's so So cool. on the business side, there's people that you don't see that don't get the credits that that are always looking out for us. And I know I know Rex is, is somebody like that for you, you know? Yeah. And I don't say even Rex, um, for me because rex took a meeting with me early on too and it, all these things I, I i remember like you know what i mean it's like a receipt like it's so yeah. bad but there's been so many people that are still I, I, listen guys like I, it's not a magic place here that i'm i'm all set it's still i'm 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 very passionate about film i want to i'm doing music for film and and that's a whole new industry so i'm, I'm just starting fresh there and i'm like looking up and I have no, you know, the least amount of experience in any room. So I think um, still to this day, there's, there's people taking chances on us uh, all the time. But I great. love that you're taking risk and being in the rooms that you didn't expect to be in and you're in there, but you're there for a reason. And so I can't wait to see the result, more of the results. Let's mm -hmm. see. I wanted to, before we go, I just wanted to point out that I love that you keep saying the one thing throughout this whole conversation is how important relationships are. And that part I'm taking with me from our conversation today is so beautiful um, to see this, our relationship so, 
so many years yeah. and finally having product to show that our relationship is beautiful working with you. One of my favorite producers in the world. Um, oh, and you keep you growing so and you added strings to same love and conducting. I mean, come on, man. Hello. Uh, I mean, just keep getting bigger and bigger. I can't wait to see what comes next. And uh, just thank you for making time out of your busy schedule to hang out with everybody and answer questions. And just, we, we're waiting for another project from you, your solo. I can't wait for that too. I hope that happens. I won't, you don't have to say anything, but I'm just being a groupie right now. <laughs> it's like, I can't wait for that, man. It was so uh, dope. Just the little you. bit you gave we, us. I, I, I was like, oh. we, do have a, we do gotta figure out what we're gonna do with that song. But again, you know, Okay, and this is the last time I'm saying I know because okay. I can, no, I can ramble, I can ramble. <laughs> but, but songs, good songs, they're timeless, man. Like I know you hear a piece of music and you're like, oh, I could I could pinpoint when that was, but a good song outside of production is always gonna be a good song, whether it was yesterday or tomorrow. And yeah. uh, that's the kind of music that I love, and that's the kind of music I try to do and, and figure out the about the money later. So a lot of times that I you know, we just make good things and then we figure out Hey, Led, do you want to put this on your album? Okay, cool. Hey, you want, you know, uh, so there's a song. I haven't said that. There is a song that we have together that okay. I just know I'm going to, it's called One Step. And, yes. And, and one I know Step one is amazing. Days, oh my God. I, okay. Days, sorry. I got excited. No, one of these days, I just know I'm going to speak, speaking into existence again, but something is going to happen. I, I, I'm just going to say it. I do hear that song being in a, in a movie at an epic emotional moment it is such a piece of art that's just sitting in your computer and i can't wait for the rest of the world to hear it I, it's relevant to, to it. today guys you were ahead you were ahead jeff and still thank are you, but i'm thank saying you, thank you. you do you know what i mean ahead. if it came if it came out then it would yeah. have been too soon but it's beautiful beautiful piece oh. We're gonna, that's we're all gonna your music. Out. We're gonna all figure your music. that out. No, thank well, you. I love working with you. You're my favorite, one of my favorites. I can't say my favorite, but I can <laughs> off when we get off of here. But it's just fun. You get you, yeah. you're like Rex. You guys love to venture out. It's part of your Aquarius stuff. <laughs> it's fun. So. Wow, that's true. That's true. <laughs> it's so much fun. Anyway, you guys, I'm are we getting an exclusive? Oh, they, Natalie wants to hear it. She's like, now nah, I want to hear the song. Well, thank you guys. See, there's that. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us, y'all. We can go for hours. I don't think we want to do that. Jeff has has baby to get to, his wife and stuff. Hey, let us see. Hi, Giddy. Thanks for this session. Love, same love. Thank you. You guys, please continue to support the wild card. Please continue to support um, Jeff. Um, Jeff, what's your um, your Instagram? I keep forgetting. Can you put it's it up uh, for me? Yeah, Jeff Giddy, J E F F G I T T Y. All right, you guys follow Jeff on on. I love Rex. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the post here. Ron, can you put it in there? At I just want to put it in there so people can follow you. They might have other questions. There we go. All right, I put it in there. That's right, right? Y'all follow Jeff. Stay connected. Perfect. Thank you for hanging out at um, Wild Card Wednesdays. Please continue to support the Wild Card and all the artists I bring on here are part of it. Um, it's available everywhere. Thank you, Ron, for doing all this technical stuff. And Jeff, for Thanks, ever, just being so wonderful and accessible to all of our people here Let, thank yeah. you so much thank you for continuously for years and continually to put out great music singing your behind <laughs> off not not curbing the realness for anybody and, no, and no. taking chances too with with on the business side as well as the creative side and Aww. and you deserve it and congrats and kudos to you as a lifer no. kudos <laughs> to another lifer i'm just happy that I get to share this journey with some more art from you. Thank you for it. Please tell Sir and Caleb, thank you for everything. This is this is everything. It's everything. And people, I can't wait to do the video. I can't wait to the, till it comes out for real, for real. I'm just excited. Really? So 
Thank you, guys. I'll see you next week. I have a really good guest next week. I cannot wait to announce. And uh, it just keeps getting better. I mean, we're at Jeff Gilman. Jeff, thank you for being here. Thank you for same love. Thank you, I'll love. see you guys next week on Wild Card Wednesday. Be good. Do your work. Hey. It's hey. my jam. This part. You're going to drive me insane. I feel like I'm losing my mind. We shouldn't be playing these games with yeah.